glad you're here. Today marks the one year death of our great queen, Cleopatra VII. And only one year, she earned not one, but two other names. She is Cleopatra VII, but she's also Cleopatra the Great and Cleopatra the Infamous. It all started after Mark Antony left Cleopatra to go marry Octavian's sister, Octavia. But the marriage was short because he did not love her. They soon went and married Cleopatra. Now, Octavian was furious that he would do this. They had an alliance, and now that alliance was broken. And he was also worried. They did have a set of twins. What if those twins could become rulers one day? He wanted to declare war, but he was far too popular. And so was Mark. So, if he did declare war, people would revolt. He knew he had to do something, though. So he published a series of wills, stating that Cleopatra's children would become the next line of rulers of her Rome. Now, this was somewhat true. Mark did want them to have some power, but the way Octavian made it state, well, it wasn't true at all. So the people were furious. And now, Octavian knew that he could do whatever he wanted and people would back him up. So he declared war. Now Cleopatra and Egypt heard of this and started making her castle ready for all the war that would go on. She made provision for her children and all that goes into it. And then, no one came. One day we were strolling throughout the gardens. I, being her counselor, was advising her what to do when they would come, because we were sure they would. And suddenly, a loud banging on the door occurred. We later found out they had gotten a tree and were trying to bang down the palace doors. But Cleopatra did the funniest thing. Without even consulting me, her advisor, she flew to the other side of the hall and actually did the most funny thing asked who it was. And she and Octavian actually talked for a while. The funniest thing possible. Now, on the other side of the castle, Antony had received reports from Cleopatra that she had died. She, I don't know what was in her head, but she wanted Antony to think that she had died. Antony was so distraught that he stabbed himself. Now, Cleopatra had been captured, and she and two maids and myself were imprisoned in her room. When she heard that Mark was dead, she wished. She wished she had never sent those reports. She felt horribly guilty. And now, she decided that instead of being led through Roman chains, as her sister had, a queen of Egypt being treated as a prisoner? She said that she would do the same, but a more formal way than just stabbing herself. She would do the traditional way, the bite of a cobra. So she had merchants from down the street bring her a bowl of plums. Now in those plums was a little asp or cobra. And when they brought it up to her room, the guards did not check very carefully and did not see the little snake slithering about. And so, the figs were brought into her room. She first wrote a letter to Octavian saying she wanted to be buried next to her husband, Mark Antony, <clears throat> and that someone would tell the story later. And then she had her two maids take a bite from the cobra, and then she took a bite herself. I was the only one in the room who did not because I was the one who was to tell the story. She was one of the greatest rulers of all time because their people loved her. And they were so sad when she died. And you would think, someone like that must be flawless. But she wasn't. She had people murdered so that she could have the throne. Her own brothers and sisters, her own husband, her own friends. So she had a dark side. But you 
suicide. Was she Cleopatra the Great, the infamous, or just plain the seven?